now we've talked about long range casting we need to talk about long range baiting because uh, I mean, it's all right being able to cast out miles but if you can't fish over bait a lot of the time it's going to cost you fish you can't always catch them on singles or little ditty bags so um, we need to look at the kit with, that you're going to need for that uh, again Century make us you know the spod rod that I use uh, it's called a spotting machine it's a new rod that's been released this year and it's got all the usual sensory technology that make them a little bit, you know, in a league of their own, if you like, in terms of uh, the, the type, the, the way they manufacture blanks, the materials they use, um, and the technologies that they can apply to a fishing rod. So you've got the anti-twist technology. It's an autoclave blank. The autoclave process squeezes the blank as it's being cured, and it, it removes all the most of the. Uh, the air from the, the wall of the uh, blank as it's being cured and as a result it's more dense it lasts longer and breaks less as well so uh, it's a good thing all in all and it's never been applied to a spod rod they're the first people who've done it with a spod rod and when you think about it you know your spod rod if you're baiting up heavily is going to be the rod that you cast with the most out of all the rods you've got and uh, you know, there's a lot of cheap spod rods about, but you know, I can't, I can't, I can't get on with them. You know, even the more expensive ones that I've used, within, you know, a whole season, most of them are on their way out, and I've got to replace it. So, you know, thankfully, you know, since I've been using Century, I've not had to do that. And, and certainly, this spotting machine is the answer to my prayers on the spotting front. We're fishing with boilies now, so. We'll focus a little bit on, on the best way to get boilies out a long way. And we've seen, we've had a little go with the stick and it was all going swimmingly until someone said seagull. And then as if by magic, they've all appeared and they've started getting baits and I just can't bear to be feeding those things. So uh, we've had to switch over to a rocket. Now, there's a few rockets about, they used to be the old cigar shaped ones and they were very, very susceptible to, to crosswinds. And, you know, they'd go out and you could use a, a, an even lighter rod than this, but you know, you'd maybe get half a dozen, seven or eight in them, and they, were, they, they couldn't really go as far, or as they weren't as accurate. So, Corda brought out this, I think they call it a, uh, it's either a, a Sky Raider or a Sidewinder, I'm not so sure, but it's, it's, it's not important. The important thing is it's got no holes in it, and it's tapered, okay? I don't think you can see that, it's slightly tapered, nose heavy, so it flies very straight and it's very aerodynamic you cast it a long way and it's actually got a it, it's a balanced piece of kit um we call them whistlers because they make this wicked noise as they're going out it's like you can imagine the carp out there saying Ooh, incoming you know but um anyway just attached with a, a normal swivel and i find this stops me getting too much twist in the, in the line 65 pound braided leader and the braid that I use for spotting is 35 pound whiplash. I know people, when they're going for distance, they go lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter, but to be honest with you, it's a false economy because sooner or later you're going to get a wind knot, it's going to go bang, you're going to lose your spot. And unless you absolutely need to, I'd always fish with sort of something that's about 35 pound. And the other thing is when you load your reel, don't go anywhere near the lip. I'm a good three mil below the lip on there, and that's quite important with braid. Cuts back on all the wind knots and uh, you end up with a lot less grief and touch wood. I can count on, uh, you know, one finger the amount of spots I've lost in the last year. And it's not just the fact that you crack off and you leave something trailing about in the lake. It's just the inconvenience. And normally I'm rushing to get my rods out because I've just got back from work, etc., etc. And uh, you don't need it. So nice chunky 65-pound leader, also whiplash. Back-to-back -back grinner to a 35-pound whiplash braid and that's good, to, you're good to go, okay? So we'll have a little go now, you see just how easy it is again. We're only fishing about 90 meters, and I say only 90, it's quite a long way for some people, but for me that's, that's you know, it's probably one of the shortest chucks I'd have to fish um, in my normal fishing. Again, it's all, you know, I'd rather fish short, but if they're out there, you've got to get out there and you've got to get bait to them, so let's see how we get on with this. It's important that you load this thing correctly, okay? Um, I use 18 millers for the bulk of my fishing. They're easy if you want to throw a few out with a stick. And uh, with this rocket here, you can get about, I normally say 10. What the, the most important thing 
is that you don't come above this line here because that unbalances it. It won't go as far. It'll be unstable in flight. You'll lose loads more out the back and it's just a waste of time. So you get about 10 in here. Just till you, you come close to the line, which is just below that hole there. And then all you do, and this is very important, quick dunk in the pond. That fills it with water, it balances out the load, adds a bit more weight so it helps you load the rod. Again, just as if you were long distance casting a lead, foot out here, just lean back, arm up straight, and remember that point of release is nice and high. And out she goes, into the clip, lowers down, quick tap down like that. And what I normally do, is you give it a couple of little tugs just to make sure that there's no boilies caught up in the uh, in the tail four or five seconds a couple of little tugs I find it easier if i hold the rod up a little bit higher it just gives it a much more severe angle which helps the spot tip up and get that big hole out of the water which is going to give you the resistance which makes them sometimes difficult to retrieve but you can see that now that's just flying in But you're on about 30 spots to a kilo. So it's easy to gauge how much you're putting out with this. And you can either be dead accurate and have it right on the money. If you want to spread it a bit, like you do naturally with a stick, again, you can just aim slightly differently every time and you'll get a bigger spread. But I like the way these sort of, I can picture, uh, I can picture, uh, little groups on the on the on the bottom you know you will lose a few out the back but that's just one of those things there's nothing perfect in carp fishing unfortunately Well, good morning. Here we are, still at Grenville. It's the morning of the third day of our session now. And uh, so far we've had everything the weather could throw at us. We've had uh, big howling north east easterly fishing into the teeth of that with hail and sunshine. And then that went away and we had a, a really very heavy frost. We had three fish during that period. Um, and yesterday everything changed. Uh, the wind swung round, started coming from the exact opposite direction, so in that we had a bit of a southerly, now it's south southwest. Still very, very cold. Uh, water temperatures dropped off a little bit, went from 10.6 when we got here to 9.8 now. Not a huge difference, but uh, not seen a lot of fish activity. I had one bite last night, fish came in from the right again. I don't know where they're coming from, but they was definitely that that right hand rod that tends to uh, rattle off first. That was the one and only bite of the night, quarter past 12. And uh, this is the result. Didn't feel like a big fish, but uh, I mean, this is, I've been using this pattern of hook for several years now, and I've never had this happen. Freak occurrence. You see the whole point snapped off the hook there, and obviously lost the fish. So that was a big disappointment. <clears throat> Furthermore, it was my only bite of the night. It went very, very quiet after that. And uh, we haven't seen or heard or, or there's been not, nothing occurred ever since. My mate Dan's moved in around the corner here yesterday. We see a couple of fish out there yesterday morning. Uh, he's not had a bite. There hasn't been a bite on the pit, um, you know, since, since yesterday. 
So uh, the change in weather seems to have, uh, you know, put them down a little bit, but I shouldn't think it'd be for long because we've got low pressure coming in. This swim is meant to be, I mean, the fish, the fish is better off the back of the wind and we're certainly now, you know, towards the back of the wind there we're at where I'm fishing. And uh, yeah, I think it's just a question of waiting until the fish adjust to the change and let's see if we can get them moving back in. Going to put a little bit more bait out today. Just ease off a little bit. We only had the one bite last night. I don't want to overfeed the swim now because um, if it's going to be a bit, it, it, it's becoming apparent that at the moment they're uh, not feeding very heavily. So I don't want to put too much out. I just want to put enough out to get them coming back, finding it, and uh, you know, give us a chance of getting another bite or two. So that's the game plan for today. Yeah, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll we'll just keep plodding away. But like I say, it's very it's not a real fishing situation. Although you'd think, you know, there's markers out there, there's bait there all the time. It doesn't guarantee that the fish are going to be there all the time. You know, definitely they've got minds of their own. There's still a bit of natural coming up. There's still a little bit of a hatch out there. So there's plenty of other options for them. And uh, you know, as we can't move, we're here for the week. We've just got to try and keep you know grinding away at working to swim. And get the most out of it that we can but certainly since we've been here we've had uh you know i've had i think since i've been fishing there's been one other bite uh we've had three four bites now so it's uh just a question of keep plugging away you know are, are any thoughts of a massive hit of fish or that are kind of a distant memory and we've really just got to try and grind out as many and as many bites as we can and hopefully you know that real biggie that we're looking for will be in amongst that uh but it's just a question of now you know, keeping our chins up, keep working at it, keep grafting away, stay positive, which is, you know, when the going gets a bit tougher than we were expecting, sometimes your head can droop and you lose a bit of confidence. But, you know, the presentations that I'm using is working, the bait that I'm using is working, the conditions are getting better, although it's not going to be, it's going to be foul up here, it's, it should be good down there, you know, with the low pressure coming, it's, it's getting into a real low, so well into the 900s as well towards the end of the session. So, just keep plugging away is, is, is the motto for today and uh, we'll see what comes of it. <laughs>